uh, John, who we've invited to speak to us here today. John Klein is president of the Regina Car Share Cooperative and a person who bikes year round in Regina. Uh, he will speak on EVs, which is electric vehicles and how we can switch from gas vehicles and why. John, we'll let you take it away. Thank you, Claire. Um, so most people in Regina have, at least the adults, have driven a car before, but fewer than one in a hundred have an electric vehicle. As a driver, why would you want to drive an EV instead of a gas vehicle is, I guess, a common question people have. There's a long list of reasons to do it, while the reasons not to are shrinking as the years go by. At the end of my talk, I promise that you'll know more about EVs and you can use this knowledge to save money, reduce pollution, and help others resist a disinformation campaign to keep electric vehicles mysterious and less used than their petroleum burning cousins. The first thing to know about EVs is that they were the original motor car. Gas cars came later, and they didn't have as much appeal to many people because they were less convenient. You had to crank start them, for instance, and find fuel for them. Electricity was more easily available. Battery technology was heavy, however. You couldn't go on the long, convenient trips that most people expect from their automobiles now. So as electric starters came into being, gas cars took over. The prevalence of fuel stations had expanded too by that point, making travel by gasoline more convenient. But technology has flipped the situation again now with improved batteries from this decade and, and last decade. The more simple and efficient electric vehicle is again on top for technology and convenience. Most Regina homes have a driveway or a garage with electricity so you can fill up on at home like on an ordinary plug let your 120 volt like you do for your gas vehicle for its block heater there's long range evs from many manufacturers like hyundai kia tesla general motors ford and others there's also convenient filling stations for electric vehicles across the province and the charging network is getting better each year. There's apps like PlugShare.com that allow you to see where virtually every charger is installed, both in the city and around the world. You can even take a virtual tour of places by scrolling around on the map and clicking on chargers and seeing people's photographs of the area. So that's where things stand for the moment. Uh, but why would you trust my opinion about this? I, in comparison to 99% of other Saskatchewanians, I'm an expert in electric vehicles. I've owned an EV since 2017. I've managed a fleet of two other EVs for the Regina Car Share Cooperative. I've borrowed an electric vehicle this year on a 6,100 kilometer vacation road trip to Ottawa and back. That's the one in the photo on the slide, if you see. I've driven four makes of EVs, and I've been given rides in every sort of production Tesla model. And I'm confident in the technology gaining wider market share, so I've invested in three different EV-specific automakers as well. I've spent a decade and a half working to build alternative transportation to the predominantly privately owned automobile that's misshapen our city. So what do I mean by misshapen, like how have cars misshapen Regina? Well, practically every community project revolves around parking cars. Like when they go to build a new building, people ask, where will I park? So that's a primary consideration now when we design our city. Whereas before uh, automobiles were considered the dominant form of transportation, that wouldn't have been a consideration. And that causes us to build in different ways and uh, prioritize empty space more than um, housing for people that's affordable, for example. So for generations, we've placed less emphasis on public transportation, and it shows in how we build our city. 
It's difficult to exist now in Regina without access to a car. That's one reason that we have car sharing now. So I learned in 2007 about car sharing from an email um, on an email list uh, that was going around my workplace. And I was interested in it, and I attended a, uh, a few potluck uh, meetings about it. And uh, we ended up forming the Regina Car Share Cooperative by the following year. We've actually held several of our annual general meetings in the basement of the Unitarian Center over the years. The idea of car sharing is to have cars available to people for hourly rentals 24 hours a day using the internet to book time with them. This reduces the cost of using a vehicle and most people don't even think about it, but they're paying for a vehicle while it sits idle in their driveway. Insurance is a daily cost we tend to overlook. People pay for car sharing vehicles, on the other hand, mostly when they're driving them instead of while they're asleep. We've managed to add two electric vehicles to Regina Car Share Co-op's fleet as electric vehicles are less costly to maintain and to recharge. Uh, you'll notice this is happening in Regina with other fleets as well. They, uh, vehicles don't need oil changes, so that saves hassle and expense when maintaining a fleet of vehicles too. I mentioned there's a disinformation campaign keeping the electric car from widespread adoption despite its advantages over the more common gasoline vehicles. Regina City Council got a taste of some of this in past years when it turned down free electric vehicle chargers from Sun Country Highway. Council was given some unusually high cost estimates for installation. Uh, it dissuaded them from accepting the chargers. It didn't take the gift. Now the city has an electric pickup truck in its fleet and it could have charged on that free hardware. Instead, they're not planning to purchase any of the hardware and install it until maybe the following year. So they're stuck with a less convenient uh, charging option, but it still works. They can still just plug into their block heater and use their truck. It just um, doesn't have as much margin for error if they forget to plug in, for example. In uh, early 2021, a city councillor pitched the idea of preventing fossil fuel companies from advertising on city-owned property. The Premier of Saskatchewan, who happens to take large, well, his party happens to take large donations from fossil fuel and advertising companies, responded angrily. The Ward 6 councillor, Dan LeBlanc, lost his job at a law firm in the organized backlash. So as you can see, there's big money and powerful people behind keeping us stuck on gas-powered transportation. So you don't have to be skeptical of negative things that you hear about EV. So you, you do have to still be skeptical, I mean, of negative things you hear about EVs, but be, um, I guess, a little bit concerned that they might be uh, uh, said with some malice, potentially, if you hear negative things about them. They're not perfect, obviously. They can have their faults, but stacked up against gas burning vehicles, they're better in most ways. So everybody's probably heard problems regarding electric vehicles. And I wanna take a moment to ask uh, people in, in both uh, Zoom land and um, in the crowd, if they've heard any problems or if they have concerns about electric vehicles, would somebody like to uh, put up their hand or, or respond with a problem that they've heard about? That you can't drive them in the winter. Okay, so that's a, a good example of one. Uh, just a moment, I need to, I think I've paused my screen sharing here. Let me go back to my, my slideshow here just a moment. There we go. So um, as you can see on the screen, um, my electric vehicle there is in, in winter and I've used it year round for five years. So the idea that you can't use them in winter is uh, it related to the, uh, the batteries getting cold and losing range and they do lose some range when they're cold, although uh, all electric vehicles that are modern have a, a heater built into the battery and that keeps them at an ideal or, or a, a good enough temperature that they continue to work right down to minus 41, which 
my car starts and works at minus 41 when it's been that cold in Regina. I see Larry's got his hand up if you want to go ahead, Larry. You're still muted at the moment. Oh, there we go. Um, I think maybe a concern maybe some people have said are they're they're too quiet. People don't hear them coming and they would cause injuries to people. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard that one too. So that that Nissan uh, uh, blue car right there, it has a, a feature that if the car is being driven at 30 kilometers or slower, it makes a, a, a high pitched whine uh, to alert people. So when you can't sneak up on people with it. And when the car is driving faster than 30, the hum from the tires, most people will hear that too. So they've actually thought of that problem. It also has a, um, a backup beeper. So like how the construction vehicles go beep, beep, beep. This one goes bing, bing, bing as it, as it is put into reverse. So they've thought of these sort of issues to try to keep people safe. And go ahead, Sandy. Okay, so the, the one thing that bothers me is that you have to plug them in uh, once a day or overnight or whatever. What about the ones that charge themselves as driving? Uh, like, why aren't they more prevalent? Okay, so um, the plugging in overnight, uh, my car is eight years old, so it's old technology now. And it goes approximately 80 kilometers when it's minus 40, and it goes about 120 kilometers when it's plus 20 out. So um, if you're driving less than that in a day, you don't have to plug it in every day. It's just more convenient if you do. So it's ready for a full trip anytime. Um, so people who only have parking on the streets, that could be an issue because they might need to visit a, um, a charging station instead, like a get, going to a gas station. But most people who have EVs and have electricity in their driveway, they just uh, have, find the most convenient experience because they're never making an extra trip to go to a gas station to, to charge up at any point. Um, and sorry, remind me of the other part of your question. Uh, the other part of the question was, I have a friend who has a, a car that charges itself oh, yeah. as well as it's got a hybrid sort of gas tank and then it's electric. So she has driven all the way down east and back and she's put one tank of gas in since last February and doesn't plug it in. That's the car I want. Oh, um, okay. So the, the plug-in hybrids are uh, how you get the, the best of both worlds if you need to have the gas tank for the, uh, for the trips off of the um, electrical uh, fast charging network. Um, you mean the non-plug-in? Well, you can get the non-plug-in too. So Toyota came out with uh, hybrids 20 some years ago, and those ones would charge their batteries only by uh, braking the car. It would create electricity and that would go in the batteries for starting the car, but it wouldn't continue using that electric battery where you get the most efficiency when you reach higher speeds. Now there's newer cars uh, since then, like the Chevy Volt, which came out um, a decade ago, and it had a plug-in option. And so you always get the best efficiency if you can plug in and take electricity from another source than if you're using gasoline to do that. Because when you're converting gasoline at any point, um, you're gonna have losses from heat. So uh, one of the biggest ways you lose the uh, energy is through heat. That's why uh, an electric motor beats uh, any internal combustion engine. I'll get back to that in just a moment um, with the rest of my talk. So now that we've gone over some of the problems, I'll, I'll finish up here and then I'll go right back to the questions. So I listed off some of the problems that people have probably heard off in my uh, notes here. So winter, battery recycling, show, slow charging time, range, cost, limited servicing options, conflict minerals, pollution shifting, etc. So we've already touched on already some of those. So what makes an EV cost less to operate than an internal combustion engine vehicle? It's physics. An electric motor is far more efficient than any internal combustion engine. For each energy unit you put into an electric motor, you go further and produce less waste heat compared to any internal combustion engine. Energy is the expensive part. And in most cases in Saskatchewan, it's produced from dirty sources like coal and methane. 
However, Saskatchewan's electrical grid is only 40% coal powered right now. And that figure is dropping this decade and task power has the intention of approaching 0%. Even on today's fossil fuel grid, SAS Power confirms that electric vehicles charged by it produce 30% fewer emissions than if they came from the tailpipe of a similar vehicle. So the cost comparison, you can look at it this way. It's actually pretty obvious which is cheaper. In April of this year, I took my car uh, seen here in the photo on a trip to Moose Jaw and it used $3.33 of electricity for the entire round trip. With gas at about $1.55 a litre, that's more like $23 for that same trip in a similar car if I burn gas. So that's $3 to $23. It used to be about four to five times less expensive to use electricity instead of gas, but with the gas price much higher, like when it's at $2 a litre, it's more like seven to nine times less expensive. Now, you'd have a sense of how much money you'd be saving if you were to switch from a gas burning car to an EV. A back of the napkin calculation would be to think of what you spend on gasoline in a month and then divide that number by seven and then apply that to your next power bill instead. And that'll be your difference in savings. If you charge it using SAS Power's electricity grid instead of a solar array at home, then you'd be producing about 30% fewer emissions with no tailpipe emissions inside Regina affecting people's health. And if you share some of these bits of experience with people replacing their cars, they may have a greater opportunity to save money, reduce emissions than if they stroll onto an auto, auto dealer lot ready to accept an outdated gas technology that's gonna cost them more to operate while making pollution than they would if they got an EV car or truck. Now, I'd be happy to get back to some questions because I'm sure people have many other questions about that. Victor had one up there before uh, you spoke again. Uh, how about regular maintenance? Is there a lot of issues with EVs? All right. So, um, as I mentioned, I went on a trip across the country uh, this summer and I had two issues on my trip. Um, one of them it was my fault. One of them was not. So the the manufacturer uh, of this uh, Hyundai Kona there, it uh, um, had a fault in the onboard charging system. So when I got to Ottawa, uh, I plugged into this one in the photo here um, at the hotel. Uh, there's a Sun Country Highway charger behind the car and there's the other one to the left. And when I plugged in, I thought it had like a hotel activation card and I thought maybe something was wrong with the hotel system, but it turned out to be something that was wrong with the car. And so a little light came on the dash and said, you've got a, an issue and you should take it to a dealer to address it. And it turned out that their computer system in the onboard charger was not good. Something they, they made a fault in manufacturing or something. So it needed to be fixed on warranty. So they ordered a part and a few days later, they replaced it and the car was as good as new again and working again. So that was one little issue. So if that had happened somewhere outside of a major city, it would have been more uh, troublesome to fix because not every auto shop can fix an electric car at the moment because the people need to be certified for working on high voltage uh, vehicles. Um, there are several now in, in Regina like OK Tire, um, there's Green Shift Auto and uh, some others like Taylor Automotive Group um, they're all certified mechanics that can work on this stuff now. And I think more and more are coming um, available too, like Hyundai and Kia. Um, there, isn't a uh, there isn't a Tesla service center in Regina, but there is one in Saskatoon, for example. Um, then the other issue I had on the trip was that um, the kids were car camping. So they would have like the car on sometimes in the night, uh, listen to music or have some lights on. And one morning I started the car or I thought I did and it turned out I just started the air conditioner and uh, that wasn't it, the car wasn't on so but it was running the electrical system so that runs down the 12 volt battery that's in the car not the main traction battery but the 12 volt battery went flat enough that the car wouldn't turn on so I needed a boost <laughs> so as a, a kind person stopped by with their VW bus and I was back on the road in less than 10 minutes after they'd 
finish boosting the boosting the car and they they'd had their lunch and, and helped me out. So there's still car issues with electric vehicles, but some of them are are uh, caused by the owner and not by the design of the vehicle necessarily. It's the same sort of uh, issues that you can have with um, with other cars. However, um, as a winter car, I like an electric vehicle better because it doesn't have a cold um, motor that depends on heat and explosions to work. It just has some relays that move and then you're able to drive your electric motor even though it's minus 40. Yeah. And, and Julie asked, uh, what are they like in a more rural area? So it can really depend on, on your, your infrastructure between and also where you're driving to. So it's very common now to get electric vehicles with ranges above 400 kilometers. So if you were planning to have um, use of it year round for trips that are more than 200 kilometers and you got a 400 or, or so range vehicle, most likely you'll be just fine now. There's lots of places in Saskatchewan with uh, fast chargers that can fill up your vehicle in under half an hour. There's a it does take some planning, you know. Sorry, there's a question here in the building. Right. If you want to mm -hmm. come up here a little closer. Okay. Is here good enough? If you can uh, hear? Yeah, maybe just back a little bit. So yep, can I, can, I can hear. I've heard that there's that if you replace all gasoline vehicles with uh, EVs, there won't be enough like lithium, or if there is enough lithium, it'll make the price of uh, getting it very uh, high, both in terms of like the dollar value and the uh, environmental damage, as, if, as they would have to dig deeper to find the material. Okay, so um, lithium is extremely plentiful, is my understanding. Um, there are other potential mi minerals that would cause uh, that sort of supply issue. Overall, I've heard that it's it's not a, not a big issue and that when uh, like older electric vehicle batteries uh, go out of uh, uh, optimal functioning, they're going to recycle them into new ones. So then we're going to reach a point where we have enough batteries overall to, to make a big difference. Another factor in this uh, uh, though is that if every single person switched their car that is a gas burning car to a electric vehicle, we're not gonna get the optimal pollution reductions that we're seeking. So what we really wanna do is, is switch some people to using things like car sharing and uh, carpooling and um, public transportation. So um, improving our public transportation system and switching those to electric where they've been converted uh, to gas. Like Regina used to have an electric trans public transportation system uh, back in the 1940s and 50s, and it was dismantled by the late 1970s. So if we switch back to electric public transportation, we'd have massive uh, pollution reductions and we wouldn't need to replace every single um, car with um, with a, a electric uh, battery one. Did anybody else have other questions? I can talk for hours, so I'll have to cut myself off at some point, but. Okay, um, there may be people who have other questions. If you'd be willing to hang out after this service, we often have a coffee uh, sharing time and I'm betting there'd be more questions for you. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I'll wait around until then. Super. Um, so is that it for your presentation, John, or did you have? No, that is it. Thanks very much. Okay. Well, thank you. That was very interesting.